Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, so says the word of God. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Amen? Amen. We know this passage very well. Before being arrested, Jesus celebrated the last meal, what we call the communion, or the last supper with the disciples. And this is so beautiful. And when we read about this meeting, I see that this was the most beautiful <coughs> meal ever. Because it was the last meal of our Lord as a man on this earth. And everything about Jesus is special and unique. When he was born, it, when he was born, something unique happened. And when we study about life, the life of Jesus, we see that, that everything about him was special. Everything that Jesus was involved was something unique, important, and most importantly, there is a message of blessing for our lives in everything. Here is not different. In this passage, we see the last meal of Jesus on this earth. And they were eating and celebrating the meal of the Passover at that time. Because they were celebrating that Passover that week. And all of a sudden, Jesus surprised the disciples. And he took bread and wine, broke back, poured wine, and gave it to the disciples so they could share. And another thing beautiful in Jesus is that he always surprises us. When we read about his life, all the, the, the report about Jesus in the four Gospels, we see many surprises. I don't know if you have... Uh, 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 notice that but there were always surprises every place Jesus was there was no bread no food and he multiplied food and fed more than 5,000 uh, uh, people Peter told Jesus is that you walking on the waters yes if it's you let me go to you said, come can you imagine how Surprising it was for Peter. Come on, come. Walking on the walls. And you can see many surprises. And uh, uh, since I became a lead pastor, this was the word the Lord, the Lord Jesus brought to my heart. From now on, I will make surprises throughout your ministry. And that's what is going on. Jesus, the Lord, our oh, Lord, the Lord of surprises. And here, he surprised the disciples. And he said, he stopped at the middle of the meeting. And he took bread, broke bread, gave to the disciples and said, pass it along and eat. Because this is, eat this, because this is my body. This piece of bread represents my body. And this bread speaks of hope, represents hope. It's interesting that Jesus, when we think of bread, bread is a symbol of provision, a symbol of food, of nourishment. Without bread, we cannot survive. We cannot keep on living. And bread is a symbol of food, of provision. And when he gives the bread to the disciples, 
There is a message of hope because he is sharing provision with the disciples. He is telling them, in other words, that he would provide everything they needed from that time on. Not only uh, human provision, but spiritual provision. And he himself once said, I am the bread of life. You remember? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. So when he shares, when he shares the, the, the bread with the disciples, he's sharing himself. He's sharing a, a, a endless provision. And he sh he's sharing his own body. He's giving them himself. When Jesus gives the bread to the disciples, he is giving himself in that piece of bread. When we receive a piece of bread in the communion, you are receiving Jesus Christ himself because he is the bread of life. Amen. So it's not an ordinary piece of bread. It's the, our very Lord and Savior that we are receiving to be part of us. We become part of him. He become part of us. Isn't it amazing? And it's so beautiful because it says, I am the bread of life. When we, we receive the bread, we are receiving Jesus Christ. And he says, I am the bread of life. We are receiving life. That's why Paul says that we must understand when we share communion. Because it's not only... Uh, it's not only a simple piece of bread. It's the very Jesus Christ and it's life. If you receive it with faith, you receive life. That's why I believe that there is power in the elements of the communion to heal not only the soul, but the body. Some people wouldn't agree with me, but I do believe in that because we receive life. And we receive the very Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I have already told you this, but it's something that I love, uh, something that I, that I find it beautiful. Because the Bible is uh, 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 poetical. God is poetical, you know. God has a great sense of humor. And I love the sense of humor of God. Some people think of God. No, God has a sense of humor, and I love it. But God also uh, is poetical. And uh, I always say that it's so beautiful that Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And Jesus was not born in Jerusalem. Jesus was not born in Nazareth. Some people don't understand why do you call him Jesus of Nazareth? He, he didn't. If he wasn't born in Nazareth, the Bible says, the story says that he, they were going. And in, in the middle of the trip, Mary felt what? They labor uh, uh, pains or co contractions. And Jesus was born in a city called Bethlehem. And Bethlehem in Hebrew, Beth house, Lehem bread. The bread of life was born in the house of bread. Isn't God poetical? Isn't it beautiful how God does things? This, these days I was just meditating, talking to God. And something came to my mind, and a sentence came to my mind. God does not leave loose ends. He does not leave loose ends. Ever. Everything he does is perfect. And uh, uh, something beautiful is that when the Jews celebrate the Passover, they share bread, they break bread. And for example, in every celebration, uh, Hosh Hashanah and, and Passover especially, when they break bread, they have a special prayer they make. And the prayer, they, they, they say in Hebrew, 
ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו, מלך העולם המוציא להם מן הארץ. And it means, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from earth. And this is beautiful in the Jewish people because they acknowledge that it, God, it is God who brings forth from the earth bread to provide life to them. And this blessing is called Hamotzi. Hamotzi comes the, the, the Hebrew word bring forth, to create, to give. God is the one who gives us. And when, when he, we share the bread, He is giving hope. He's bringing hope. He's bringing forth hope to our lives. So when we celebrate the communion, we are celebrating hope that the Lord will provide everything in our lives. We, are, we celebrate hope because we know that when we receive the, that little piece of bread, we are receiving life. Amen. And if we receive life, it brings forth hope in us because we will always have life in Him. Not only provision, we will have life. And He said, I come not to give you only life, but so that you have abundant life. So the life we receive from the Lord is not an ordinary life. It's an abundant life. A life with abundance in everything. In all aspects of life. Amen? This is beautiful. The Hamatsi is the blessing of the provision of bread for the Jewish people. And when they break that, and Hamatsi means, I will tell you what it means. Hamatsi, the blessing over bread. It means, blesses God, this blessing blesses God for enabling bread to come forth from the earth. It's recited any time that bread is consumed. And usually with a special ceremony at Shabbat dinner. So every Shabbat to the Jews. They recite, they say this prayer, and thank God for bread. And we have much more reasons to celebrate God with this piece of bread. Because the bread that you share is ordinary bread. But the bread that we share is our very Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then Jesus, he shares. He shares with them bread. And then <clears throat> he shares what? The wine. And he says, then he, Jesus, took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Can you see hope in these two simple verses? Oh, a lot of hope. He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave to them, say, drink from it, for this is my blood. First, this is my blood. That's not ordinary blood. This is my blood. And Jesus is the Lamb of God. His blood, His soul, he, he was entirely pure and holy. And His blood is entirely holy. And He shed, this is my blood. The blood of the, of the only perfect man who set foot on this earth. This is my blood. I'm giving my blood for you. And then He says, Ah, uh, let me see, where am I? Yes, my blood. But this is the blood of a new covenant. What I'm doing now, I'm doing something new. Something that had never been done before. It's something completely new. And that from now on, it's going to change your life for all eternity. This is 
a blood of a new covenant. And you know that covenants, spiritual covenants, are made only with blood. I have told you that. His spirit's covenants are only made with blood. When God made a covenant with Adam and Eve in the garden, he killed an animal to clothe them. And blood was shed. The blood of the animal was shed so that a covenant was made. And after that, God called Abraham to, through him, make a big nation, a whole nation, the people of Israel. And he told Abraham, from now on, you are going to be circumcised. And all the men in your family, in these people, will be circumcised. And you know that when there is a circumcision, blood is shed. So keep this in your heart. Spiritual covenants are always made with blood. That's why Jesus said, this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant. But all the covenants before were made with the blood of animals. So they were imperfect. But now when Jesus says, this is the blood of a new covenant, this new covenant will be a perfect covenant. It will wash your sins away. You'll be justified. You'll be free from sin. And more than that, my blood will provide to you eternal life. I will give you not only my mercy, but my grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? Something new. But there's a lot. For us to talk about blood. But I won't say anything. I was meditating this morning. And I said, Lord, Lord, I can't. God brought so much about blood. And I have to preach one sermon only. One sermon about blood. Because there are so many things. But I'll share something with you this morning. Uh, uh, Jesus shared. And said, this is my blood. But of course it was not blood. It was wine. And in Judaism, wine is a symbol of joy and celebration. They joy, but they rejoice and celebrate. We have to understand this. They, have, they rejoice and celebrate not only for what they had and what they have. They rejoice and celebrate also for what God has has stored for them. So it's a celebration and a rejoice of hope. It's a celebration of thanksgiving. Because when they celebrate, they celebrate everything God had done to them. But they also celebrate everything that God has prepared for them in the future because there are promises God has made that has, have not been accomplished yet. And it's the same in our lives. So that's why I like to celebrate. That's why sometimes I, I lift up my hands. And I sometimes I feel like dancing and I shout, glory to God, hallelujah. That's my way of worshiping. I like to celebrate the Lord. Celebrate Jesus, celebrate. You know this song? Yeah. Yeah. Once I went to a church, I won't say the name of the denomination. I won't say that. And they were singing a song. It's a church that my brother was uh, 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 visiting. He was going to this church. He said, let's go to my church. My pastor is a great preacher. I said, oh, I like good preachers. Let's go there. And they sang this song, Celebrate Jesus, and they put, the people said, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate. My dad was next to me and said, Go, go back. Don't go up. I said, Dad, Dad, don't, don't, don't clap, don't clap, don't you? We can't. But I was there, and, and with Anna, and my dad was next to me and said, You sing this song, you feel like, put your hands together, and jump, but you can't. Because in this church they preach that the adoration and worship must be in spirit and truth. So spirit and truth for them is something very calm. 
You cannot jump. No, I taught you this. If one day you come to this church and you feel like dancing and jump and clap your hands, do it! If you want to dance in the middle of the church, do it. If you want to come here on the front floor and dance, do it! If the Lord touched you to celebrate, to worship Him, doesn't matter. Worship Him. Amen. Who am I to judge you? Amen. Who am I to prevent you to adore and worship the Lord of your salvation? Praise God. Amen. Amen. You think God is sad or disappointed with the Jewish people with their dancing and clapping and celebration? No. Go, God is the God of celebration. I'm sorry, I know I will disappoint some people by saying this, but that's the truth. The Lord says the worship should be in spirit and truth, but only He knows what is the spirit and truth. Oh, because only you know, only He knows His our hearts. But anyway, it's a symbol of joy and celebration of hope. When they share wine in the celebrations, they have a special prayer for that too. And it's called the Kiddush. And the Kiddush says, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. And it means, blessed are you, the Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine creator of the fruit of the vine. And you know what's beautiful? This word kiddush means sanctification. Why? Because in the Ten Commandments, the Lord said that we should sanctify the Shabbat. A day of rest. Not the Saturday, but a day of rest. And they would drink, or they did drink, the wine, they shared the wine, and they called Kiddush, sanctification. Because it's a symbol that they are sanctifying that day, that moment, to the Lord. But you know, something very beautiful is that sanctification means to set apart. Right? Sanctification means to set apart. So when Jesus shares with the disciples. And when we share the blood, the wine, it's a celebration of joy and hope. But we also celebrate, we also celebrate that we were set free from sin. Because when we share this wine, this kiddush, this sanctification, this setting apart, we celebrate that once we have Jesus, we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we ourselves are set apart from sin. Amen. The Lord sets us apart from sin. And if we are set apart, if we are away from sin, we are close to Him. Amen. And Isaiah says that our sins make separation from us and God. God could not have communion with us. God could not even be close to us because of our sins. But when Jesus makes this new covenant by His blood, and when we share His blood, when we share this wine, we are sharing sanctification. We are sharing this moment that Jesus set us apart from sin and draw us close to the Father and to Him. So when we take the blood, we take communion. Why do we call communion? It's not because we Christians gather at church to eat bread and wine. The meaning here is much deeper than that, much more spiritual. It means communion because by His blood, we are separate, set apart from sin, and we are drawn close to Him, to the Father, to have communion with Him. The most important, he's not the, the communion we have is wonderful. But the most important meaning here in the earth is that our communion with our Heavenly Father is restored in Jesus Christ through His blood. Hallelujah! That's why this is a celebration. That's why every week the Christians of the early church would 
gather together to celebrate. And they celebrate, they ate together. They drank together, they talked, they shared the word of God. If you read Acts chapter 2, you will, will see that. But this is very beautiful, sanctification, the remission of sins <coughs> through the blood. Symbolized by the wine we share is what? It's the fact that we were drawn closer to the Lord to have communion with Him. Amen? Amen. And another thing worth noting here is that Jesus said in John 15, He said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine. I am the true vine. Only Him can give the true wine for all of us. All, only Him can insert us to the true vine. And the Father is what? The vine dresser. What did Jesus say? I could, we could say that He gave us the wine because He is only the true vine can give us the true why. Spiritually speaking, only His blood can give us remissions of all our sins. Only His blood can be a seal upon us that will guarantee our entrance in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. And then, my prayer is that from this morning on, you will never see the communion as you have seen. This is much more than ordinary bread and wine or grape juice. This is the very Christ. This is his very blood. The bread will remain blood, bread. And the wine will remain wine. But spiritually is different. When we partake, when we break, partake and eat bread, is spiritually there's a very relevant and important meaning. And when we drink from the cup, we reaffirm, we confirm our covenant with the Lord. More than that, He confirms His covenant with us. When we share the communion, it's a witness that we live under the blood of Christ. The spiritual realm knows that we belong to Him. The angels of God recognize us by the blood of Christ in us. And the angels of hell also recognize us by the blood of Jesus. They know those ones we cannot touch. Those ones we cannot defeat. Those ones we have no power and authority over them. Because everything we do against them will be useless because they are the ones covered by the blood of the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we celebrate as well. Doesn't that bring hope to your heart? Yes. To know that as long as you live on this earth, there will be something in your life that will protect you from all the powers of hell. They will not have any power over you. The devil himself cannot touch you, cannot destroy you, cannot defeat you. And do you know how powerful the Satan is? He is. And we are so weak. We get cold. And we can barely get up and walk. We are very feeble creatures, humanly speaking. But spiritually we are strong and undefeatable because of the blood of Christ upon us. 
Because there's power in the blood of Jesus. The greatest power of the universe. The blood of the Lamb of God. Because now he is not only the Lamb of God anymore. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And he has in his hands the keys of life and death. Mm -hmm. He is the Almighty mm -hmm. of the whole universe. And his blood is upon us. Can you imagine that? The blood of the almighty being of the universe is upon you now. It's, a, it, it's going to be upon you tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. It's upon you when you're sleeping. Everywhere you are, whatever you do, whatever you go, the blood of Jesus the King of Kings, the Lord of us, will be upon you 24 7. Doesn't it bring hope to the heart? To know that it doesn't matter what happens in the future, His blood will be upon you. And you'll be His. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, the spiritual realm will know. That one belongs to the Almighty, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then Jesus says in verse 30, in verse 30, after that, and there is a promise here, <coughs> but I don't have to talk about that because you know it very well. And he says, this is the greatest hope Jesus gave us. This is the greatest hope He gave us. You've seen this verse. It says, But I say to you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on. Let me stop here. Jesus said, But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on. Then He makes a promise. A promise that brings the greatest hope a servant of God could have ever. And he says, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And he says, what, you were, what we are doing now, what you will do regularly from now on, you do it in anticipation of that great day when we will gather again and have it in my Father's kingdom. This is a promise. And every promise God makes, He fulfills it. And He says, one day, we are going to have the communion in a few minutes. And while, while we break bread, and pour wine and share it and partake it. We will be celebrating something that one day we will celebrate with our Lord and Savior. Does it, doesn't it bring hope to your heart and joy? Isn't it more than more than a thousand reasons for you to celebrate and rejoice? Doesn't matter what you're going through today. Regardless of your problems and tribulations and flights and hardships, this is a reason for us to celebrate. Because no matter what you're going through now, no, no matter what happens in the future, we have a promise that one day we will celebrate this with our Father in heaven. And every time when I read this scripture, not only does my heart rejoice but it overflows with joy and hope because I know that one day we will celebrate this with him and he says in my father's kingdom do you know do you know why Jesus said in my father's kingdom he could have said in the kingdom of heaven, 
Why didn't Jesus say, one day I will celebrate this with you in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus, many times when he was preaching, he, he, he mentioned the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For theirs, let the children come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He used many times kingdom of heaven. Why didn't he say kingdom of heaven here? Why did he say, in my father's kingdom? The answer is very simple. My father will be there with us. It will not only be you and me, but my father will be there. He will be there with us celebrating this great and heavenly and glorious meal. That's why Jesus said, when he says in my Father's kingdom, he said, my Father is going to be there. He will be with us. The Almighty will be there with us and we will celebrate together. God, the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will be as they are here today with us. Because God the Father was with Jesus and the disciples that day. And the Holy Spirit was there with them. And they will be here with us this morning. They are already on. But one day, they will be with us in person. Can you imagine that? What we are going to have here, now, we are going to have in but we are going to see them face to face, both Jesus and the Father. And they, at that moment, they will be like our brother. At that moment, the Father will not be the Almighty God. He will be with us as a Father, loving us as Let me stop. Otherwise, I will speak and rejoice and glorify all morning on the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of the end. And we celebrate hope. We lit the candle of hope. And we are going in this first day of the end. Celebrate hope and rejoice at the Lord's day. And you are all invited. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.